and we are presenting a strategic and streamlined plan to re-elect Jim Westwood from Texas for Jim Westwood. So um, we're going to talk about messaging, B and I will talk about that, um, then we'll talk about money, that'll be RICO, and Hunter will talk about our ground campaign. Um, so the first thing with messaging is, you know, we came up with a contrast, urgency, and vision. Our contrast is that Jim Westwood is experienced, which our um, challenger is not. He supports small government and does not want to raise taxes. Urgency is um, kind of the same thing. We, it's urgent that Houston continues in um, furthering Houston through education. And we don't need to raise taxes to do that, and we believe that that's something that Jessica is interested in doing, and we don't think that's what Houston's or Texans are really about. Um, we're going to do direct mail pieces um, to kind of further that urgency for the persuadables. Our direct mail for the persuadables is going to say, like, um, Oh yeah, taxpayer's best friend. We used to have him with uh, getting his award from the caucus. And our other direct mail piece is going to be him with his family, the experience and leadership Houston needs, and then just like family next to him, Houston in the background, and also in the background, all the groups of Houston that have supported him in the past, um, all the police chiefs, firemen, teachers, because they he did uh, implement that program for reimbursing teachers who care about students. Yeah, so that's our vision, as she said, the experience and leadership that Houston needs. Um, so for interview getting up the message out, we have the direct mail campaign, um, phone calls and canvassing, Hunter's going to talk about more with the ground game um, and his speechy. And then we'll be focusing, not a lot, but a little bit on a website and social media presence. We don't really think that our um, base is going to be on those methods, but we might want to maintain a Facebook profile um, and just have somebody like a campaign that's doing that. Okay, and money. All right, guys, finance, money, the lifeblood of the campaign. We, like we said earlier, we're going to run a very effective and efficient campaign. So as a four-time incumbent in this situation, we, we're going to harp on something we haven't heard today yet. We, like, Jim Westwood specifically is on, has some powerful friends. He's on a couple of powerful committees. It's main, mainly House Redistricting Committee. This is a redistricting cycle. That means he apparently is going to have a lot of very powerful Republican friends. So we're going to approach the Republican Party. We're going to have an event with $5,000 buy-in table where we're going to invite, we're going to invite a lot of Republican, fairly important officials, probably get a Lieutenant Dewhurst, maybe have maybe have the Speaker in there, might even throw in Perry, probably. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting frivolous now. Okay, and now we're going to, as, as uh, the election, um, local consent calendars committee, that means all over the state, energy, water, utility companies, from any, like Rio Grande Valley, West Texas, Dallas, San Antonio, they, they're, it's in their benefit to be in our good favor. So we're gonna obviously go up to them, and go up to them immediately, Five thousand. we would like to talk to them face to face, can you give us $5,000, come to our event. Um, business and industry committee. We obviously are in, we're in a good position as well for a lot of business to come in from, I mean, small businesses to large businesses, we're gonna same same exact kind of pitch. Come to our come to our event. So if we get minimum fifteen tables in this situation, we have our goal of seven to five thousand dollars. We already have one twin one seventy on site and our goal is two fifty. So we're gonna use the seventy five seventy two thousand and as we as we approach them for we make our pitch for the five thousand dollar table they're going to realize that their five, your five thousand is going to go to get this, or it's going to fund our campaign, and it's going to keep us in, and everyone wins in that situation. Especially if I've been a your friend, it's, it's a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of situation. And okay. that's our kind of pitch for the finances. We're also going to be hitting up, you know, the Christmas card list. He's going to have a whole lot of contacts going into it. As mentioned, powerful Republican friends. Uh, Major Dunn, and then his church. He's one of the second largest. I think somebody else said it was the second largest uh, Baptist church in Houston, so we'll be doing that as well. For the ground game, uh, for the base, that's 55% of our voters, obviously. Everyone has to keep up with their base. And I think that three fourths in the prayer said this, the only team that I heard, was you know, you need to call them first off and you need to thank them for voting for you in previous times. And if you just say, hey, thanks for voting for me last time, I'd really appreciate your vote this next time, I feel like. Uh, I can't remember who said it yesterday, said if you just say thank you, that goes a long way. People remember that. I, th I think it was you, Ms. Moore, who said you're not going to send a baby shower gift if you don't say, if you don't get a thank you note. Um, and then the persuadables, 35%, that's who we're really going to go after. 
what we're trying to get is 50-50 split on that. We obviously don't want to get, I mean, it's not realistic to get even anything more than that. So that's who we're really going to hit hard with direct mail, with early, uh, early voting and um, the day of canvassing, all that. And then the get out the vote, the 10%. We're going to canvass early voting. Not so much again, but we're going to direct vote. And then the day before of, we're going to go big time. Um, this timeline, the first day you can file for it is August 8th, and then we're going to have a rally on August 11th saying he's fully going to um, run again. We're going to have a, a little party, you know, barbecue, hot dogs, that kind of thing. And he's going to give a speech highlighting all his new things, saying, you know, thank you again for letting me represent you. I'm from here. I appreciate it. I want your vote again. Um, power of the individual, because he's a small business owner. He came back, started his own business from college. Um, keeping up the future with the kids, how he helps the teachers and everything, reimbursing them. And also, he wants their full support and wants everyone to vote for him again. And then afterwards, we're going to do uh, direct mail for pre-walking. And then he's going to walk with his family, his children. He's going to get some firemen, some cops, because they endorse him. And we're going to spread out to the areas that we think we're going to have the most challenge with. So uh, with that, that's it. We'd actually like to ask you guys for some financial support if you'd be willing to consider making $5,000. I love it. <laughs> to our campaign, and that is our pitch for Jim Westwood. Okay. Thank you. 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 So y'all are, first off, brilliant talk, talking about tapping into the, the committees, because that's absolutely as an incumbent where the money is. If for, the, for some reason the race gets close, though, how do y'all respond to the likelihood that you're going to get dinged on being the lobbyist candidate, to being the special interest candidate? Well, our I mean, our base essentially is a conservative, conservative kind of electorate in that our base is the, we are like, they love us for being the taxpayer's best friend. We have an award specifically given for that situation. We're just going to harp on, we're, we're more business, low taxes, and I mean, that typically goes hand in hand with that. I mean, in that in that situation, we obviously initially are going to hit up our base for the previous. We we want four donations prior to. This, I mean, four elections prior to this with donations, more than likely without uh, lobbyist donations. So most of our funds, or uh, not most, but we will have still a large sum of our funds from these people, and that's how we can kind of ward off those. So, Tax. so hypothetical situation. You, I don't need an answer, obviously, but I'm just sort of. So you're thinking through this in, in your future careers. Your challenger has an average donation of fifty dollars to their their campaign from five thousand donors, and they've raised one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I'm just making numbers up. So that math is clearly wrong. You, on the other hand, have a hundred donors with an average contribution of thirty-five thousand dollars. And your top five donors are Enron, Exxon, uh, let's see, Halliburton, Halliburton and George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. Regardless of, of who your who your base is, and this is something that's not a problem in your district when you're when you have fifty five percent of the vote already in your pocket. But if for some reason the climate changes dramatically, like we saw in twenty ten. Do you want to be tied to those people? How do you insulate it, and what's your response? And that, when you have the money that comes from having those five people, what you do and what you think about is having a direct mail piece or a TV ad or a radio ad already in the drawer that's just put away that says, I'm going to get dinged on this probably. How do I respond? And that's just something to think about. I think you're right. I think we'd be, um, in that case, looking for a direct mail campaign that would emphasize small business and his effective small business. We kind of decided the DMA was too big for TV and radio to hit that many people right. with that small, but that's it. Yeah. And again, uh, that is such a larger conversation, but some of the things. You turn out at your August event, not going to have a lot of people in Houston in August. <laughs> 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 well, I think it's good, though, that y'all tried to balance the big events with how y'all are going to go to the party and use the committees. Um, but y'all are going to try to raise money from church, and those are going to be $25 donors. And y'all did have direct mail, so there is a little bit of balance there, but pretty brilliant. But we need to make it a little more kind of tongue-in-cheek that it's like obviously like pay yeah, play I, a little bit, like not as apparent as you made it. Yeah, that was, well, I mean, <laughs> we were all thinking, like, that was okay, really okay, transparent. Okay, we get it, we our, our get it. Are obviously professional, so I you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's probably yeah. everyone to say again in your place. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. Well, and it actually does it really work. Yeah, it really does.
Um, on the messages, so can you go back to the message slide? Yeah. So you're going in the right direction. I, I like things about this, right? Like I like that you thought through the contrast and it was good. And I like the fact that, it, that taxes, you know, flows through the first two. I like that experience is in the contrast and the vision. But you need to tighten this up. This is not uh, this is not a message right now. Like, remember, what what is your podium sign? If I'm Barack Obama, and it says change we can believe in. What is yours? You know, is it experience leadership? Is it lower taxes? Is it smaller government? Like, what is that? So work on that a little bit. But you're going in the right direction here. Um, and the other thing I thought is, so you talked about 55% base, 35% persuadable, and 10% GOTV. Why? I mean, yeah. if you've got the 55% base, you know, why are you spending? I mean, persuasion is expensive. It's expensive, and as we said, you're an incumbent, so you don't need to like spend every dollar that you have. I'll you see. can save it for other things. You can, you know, you as, as as you're on all these committees, you want to help other people get their campaigns, win their campaigns, so you can come chair one of those committees someday, right? That's how that works. So don't spend all your money on persuasion when you don't need to. Well, our, our specific strategy in that instance was we were going like, to kind of touch on our base. I mean, assuming we get the 50, 55, or whatever, we knew that her strategy was going to be to get, I mean, she statistically needed almost 165% like you had done of the persuadable. So we knew if we, and she was going to try to do other tactics to kind of make sure, but if we got 50-50, we split it, she statistically had no shot against us. So that was, that was like, I guess, our strategy in regards to going after the persuadables. I mean, I feel like we're in a well-insulated district in terms of the win is pretty simple, but we kind of thought, like, what is she going to do and how can we preempt that? Okay, so um, there's a little defense here. Yeah. yeah. But, and, I, and, but don't go overboard on the defense. Don't go crazy with defense, because that's, that's like paranoid. That's like Nixon paranoid. Don't, don't be that guy, right? <laughs> you can give yourself enough rope to hang yourself yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing, too, is if your district is 55% you have identified in this base, really your GOTV is everybody you didn't get to vote in your own vote. That's right. Right? right. And so your GOTV is not 10%. Your GOTV is... 100% of your IDs and anybody who's voted consistently in Republican primaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your geo, so you can lower your cost burden by just saying your party base from from the three of threes or two of threes, and you can ignore them at the early part of the campaign. I think it's real nice that y'all want to do a thank you campaign. Again, you have limited time, you have limited resources. Even if you go after the lobbyist money, like you're saying, and you raise a million and a half dollars, why would you spend a million and a half dollars doing a thank you campaign? when you can go help other people, or more importantly, when you win, you identify the people that voted for you and thank them, yeah. not the people that didn't go vote. Yeah. So there's a way to do that. Again, I, I thought that was smart how you all did that. So I'm, not, I'm just saying sort of for everybody who's listening who wants to do field, that's the cheaper, easier way of doing it. It also creates less of um, a hair loss problem for your field director. Thank you. I like going after the persuadables. I know a lot of incumbents who Peak Domenici, Peak Domenici told me this. I had the same argument with him one time. Peak Domenici is the senior, the former senior U.S. senator in Mexico who always won with 60 some odd percent of the vote. And I, I had the argument about helping putting that money and everything into other programs. And his response to me was, I know a lot of former United States senators that had your opinion. <laughs> so I would, do, I would be spending the money on the perspectives and, and, and doing what you're doing and making sure that I got reelected because there are swing elections. You're not going to raise money on the redistricting by the way. Well, we're just going to set up the event via that situation. Well, this is an industry that will help you raise more money. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, the event. That was the place you wanted to be. Very good. Good job. Good job. Good job.